This is the 5 minute guide to the USS New Jersey, a Nawa class battleship of the United States Navy. So, picking back up on the Iowa class, a series of reviews that we got slightly distracted from in the specials, we're going to cover the New Jersey next. USS New Jersey, BB-62, also known as Big J or Black Dragon, would become the second ship of the United States Navy to be named after the state, and would earn more battle stars for combat actions than the other three completed Iowa class battleships. She was launched on the 7th of December 1942, the first anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor, and commissioned on the 23rd of May 1943. After fitting out and training, the ship headed for war in early 1944, joining Task Group 58.2 as part of the US 5th Fleet, just in time for the attack on the Marshall Islands. Her first action was as part of a surface and air strike against the major Japanese naval fleet base at Truk, in the Carolines nearby. The main purpose of this was to occupy all nearby Japanese naval forces to prevent any assault on the vulnerable amphibious assault group. Of the total haul of two Japanese light cruisers, four destroyers, three auxiliary cruisers, two submarine tenders, two submarine chasers, an armed trawler, a plane ferry, and 23 random other auxiliaries, not including small craft, New Jersey destroyed the trawler and, along with other ships, managed to sink the destroyer Maikaze. The next few months were spent in escort and bombardment missions, shooting down a couple of torpedo bombers on a return mission to truck. Then it was on to the Marianas, where she bagged another torpedo bomber in between bombardment missions in support of the marine landings. This assault drew the Japanese out, which in turn led to the Battle of the Philippine Sea, or alternatively, the Great Marianas Turkey Shoot. Clues in the name there, since the tables had turned compared to the start of the war, Green, inexperienced Japanese pilots were savaged by veteran American formations, whilst below all the chaos, the New Jersey formed part of the escort screen for the carriers. After this, she transferred to the 3rd Fleet and began operations in and around the P Philippines themselves, culminating in the Leyte landings in October. This, of course, brought the remainder of the Japanese Navy out again to the Battle of Leyte Gulf, and whilst American carrier strike power was effective early on, Admiral Halsey ended up falling for the decoy Northern Force, and New Jersey was sent, along with the bulk of American striking power, on a wild goose chase after those effectively empty ships. She was steaming hard back south to try and intercept the Centre Force when news of the unlikely victory of Taffy 3 over the Centre Force came through. As the fleet reformed off Luzon, kamikaze attacks intensified, and whilst previously the escorting forces had broadly kept the carriers safe, even the massed anti-aircraft batteries of the New Jersey and her accompanying escorts couldn't stop everything getting through this time, and the carriers Intrepid, Hancock and Cabot all took varying levels of damage, amongst other ships that were also hit. The next enemy was the weather, the notorious Typhoon Cobra that crops up in so many World War II American ship histories, which actually caused more damage and sank more vessels than the past few mass kamikaze attacks, although New Jersey herself made it through relatively unscathed. She would go on to bag a number of additional Japanese aircraft in the escort and bombardment missions that followed, edging closer and closer to Japan as the war went on wrapping up the war with the obligatory stint as part of Operation Magic Carpet, bringing just under a thousand troops home to San Francisco. Post-war service took her back to the Atlantic for the first time in years, bouncing back and forth between America and the UK until the Korean War broke out in 1950. Coming out of a brief stint in the mothball fleet, she spent two tours of duty ranging up and down the Korean coast, providing artillery support and shore bombardment with her main guns, suffering one dead and two wounded from a long-range hit to her forward turret from a defensive shore battery. A long list of trains, bridges, troop concentrations, factories, ammunition dumps, bunkers, supply depots and various other military targets would fall to her accurate and successive bombardment missions. Although she came under fire numerous times during these missions, her rate and accuracy of fire was such that the enemy was invariably driven off or destroyed before they had a chance to find the range, and she would not receive any further hits from enemy action in this war. At the conclusion of the Korean War, she was sent back to the Atlantic, where she undertook numerous training cruises in both the Atlantic and the Mediterranean, before being decommissioned and placed back into reserve in 1957. 
A decade would pass, but at the end of that the US found itself trying to figure out how to deliver a lot of explosives to targets in Vietnam that didn't involve sending in combat aircraft, which were taking increasing losses. With the New Jersey in the best condition of the four Iowa class, she received a major electronic systems overhaul and had the 20 and 40mm anti-aircraft battery removed, reducing the ship's top weight considerably and significantly dropping the number of crew needed. She would be engaged in the old shore bombardment missions again, mostly hitting bunkers, trucks and gun emplacements this time. However, there was some naval combat as well. She managed to sink 11 waterborne supply craft one October evening, along with a few notable rescues of friendly land forces, achieved by blasting away incoming attackers with full 16-inch high-explosive salvos. However, for all her efforts, Vietnam was a somewhat less successful war for the US, and in 1969 she was once more placed into the reserve forces, her appearance now radically different to some of her nearly unmodified sister ships. But after a 12-year nap, the ship was called into service once more as the US Navy attempted to reach a 600-ship target strength. A variety of schemes were considered to equip the ship with modern defence systems and offensive missiles. However, it turned out the Sea Sparrow system was incapable of standing up to the blast of the main guns, and in the end, only four of the twin 5-inch 38 mounts were removed, in exchange for four Phalanx close-in weapon systems mounts for protection against incoming missiles and aircraft at short range, eight armoured box launchers for Tomahawk cruise missiles for long-range offence, and eight quad cell launchers for harpoon missiles for short-range anti-shipping action. After a year of work, the ship was back in commission again. Her modernisation had also supposed to have made her unique, in that she was to be the only Iowa-class ship supposed to lose a main gun turret, the idea being to replace the rear turret with either a 48-cell vertical missile launch cluster, or a small hangar and takeoff landing pad for Harrier jump jets. But this idea was eventually dropped, and she kept all three main battery turrets, although she did get eight RQ-2 Pioneer unmanned aerial vehicles to spot for her guns. 1983 would see the ship back in action trying to sort out the Lebanese Civil War, performing new shore bombardment missions against enemy gun emplacements and bunkers. However, this time the ship experienced severe accuracy issues, missing some targets by almost 10,000 yards. This was not actually down to any fault of the crew or the guns, but because some rear echelon genius had remixed all her powder charges using different batches of powder that all had different burn rates to create single charges, resulting in a completely random amount of explosive power being generated by each firing. This was only solved thanks to the fact that those same officers involved had missed a batch, which was then swapped out for the contaminated charges. Following this conflict, she spent most of the 1980s in the Pacific annoying the Russians, before a final operational cruise to the Persian Gulf, arriving back in the USA in February 1990. She would then be decommissioned, for the final time as it turned out in 1991, just missing the outbreak of the Gulf War, in which Iowa and Missouri would take part. Due to damage to Iowa's second turret from an internal explosion, New Jersey was kept in the mothball fleet alongside Wisconsin until 1999, when a new law required her to be fully taken out of service and donated as a museum ship. In the year 2000, she arrived at Camden Waterfront, opening to the public shortly thereafter, and she can still be seen and visited to this day. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to tag your question with Q&A if you want to leave a question for the dry dock.